Hello everyone, welcome to Fearful Greedy. In today's video, I bring you a cool stock that I did not pull the trigger on. I will tell you the top things I like about it and the five things that made me pass on it. First, a quick update. Since the last video, the portfolio is up roughly 10,000 euros, so about 16% and 65% since inception. Money weighted rate of return is over 20%. If you are new to the channel, I add some money every month or every few months in the portfolio. I'm based in Spain. I share every movement in this channel. A part of the videos, there is a Google Sheet that is always updated and linked in the description. Or if you go to fearfullygreedy.com, it will direct you there. Also, now you can check the write-ups or thesis or short pieces on each position. Uh, you will see it on the name in the Google Sheet or on the right there will be the investor relations page uh, at this point. Uh, depending on my laziness, I did a longer thing or a shorter thing. Since the last video, no new investments, but I did add 3,000 euros to Playmates Toys, increasing the position by 50% in number of shares to 120,000, and then an 800 euro addition to Rai International after their full year report, which actually showed some hope. Let's talk about Caspi. What is Caspi? Caspi is a company based in Kazakhstan that has digitalized the entire country by the looks of it, filling the gap of an underserved tech sector in mainly three verticals. Payments, think Visa or MasterCard, Marketplace, Amazon or Baba, Fintech is more like buy now, pay later, like Klarna, everything through a super app that as of today uh, has 40 million users of the uh, 90 million total population of Kazakhstan. For all their services, they have fees. For their payment, their fee is around 1.3%. Their marketplace is 8.5%. And the lending, the fintech, they have an average $1.2,000 loan per user, 6% non-performing loans, and the fintech yield is 6% also. First, uh, crazy growth and uh, market share, very much to like here, it's obvious, but everything in, is obvious after the fact in investing. A company that has grown so much from nothing is to be applauded. Their market share shows that they are the top dog. A company that can disrupt on any market shows with proof how great it is. It's in the ink, not in their PowerPoint, so they don't have to tell us uh, that they are great. You can see it yourself. Share of mind, uh, that comes uh, as a second thing for any app that the user uses daily. It just holds a big brain space and shows how needed, useful it is for the user. Strengthening their offering, building in more use cases, reinforces the the proposition and with a first move and with little regulation you can create a monopoly that's good and bad i mean a monopoly will make less uh, creativity for a company for a country but it also is very good for this company in example the second the third thing i, I like is the spawner dna in so few years they have moved from just a bank to this and they just keep adding in anything that makes sense from payments to marketplace to travel train tickets used cars anything you can you know, think that makes sense they just add it First movers, they took the market by surprise and they are in a sense creating the market, which is as if you ask Google or Facebook, is so, so much beneficial and it provides such a wide mode as long as you can remain competitive and uninterrupted. They were the government partners, so many facilities were made for them to be at this point. I don't know anything about how new players will be treated, but so far being first is great. Huge margins, the margins are, are just Absurd. No competition brings you that. They have been such great actor for Kazakhstan, but they, are, they have also been very well paid for doing so. As more competitors come in, the market becomes more competitive. I expect this to go down, even if revenues keep going up. Good thing monopoly laws probably won't interfere. Okay, now into the things that I register as negative or red dots or flags. Five things I didn't love for me and uh, in my opinion, so I know great investors that are in these stocks, but for me, the first thing is that it's a, it's a tech company. I'm not a tech investor. I do like the tech enabled business that do physical things and that internet or tech has enabled them to do it in a different way. Think Naked Wines or Carvana. But to me, although they are building it, for me now Caspi is more what I call or what I think as naked tech. 
we can go deeper but the logistics cloud processes back office business from baba or amazon are a bit different i think have built a super costly to replicate and i think here less so my five cents uneducated five cents five cents then the geography what do i know about kazakhstan very little they pol their political situation their capitalism and ownership st stability zero so this is a hard no for me i would call it limited growth their growth uh, has been incredible to be applauded but i think there's a close limit from the same verticals if they keep adding verticals sure growth then is just the beginning until they conquer the entire local economy economy and geographically central asia but even if they successfully expand to uzbekistan kyrgyzstan Tajikistan, Turkestan, which is a big if as of today those economies are less than 50 percent of kazakhstan together and expanding further i don't see it their user variable is capped or slow growing as of now because they have stopped sharing it or not sharing it but showing comparable periods previously because they have pretty much saturated entire kazakhstan then I will say there have been also in this story non-repeatable factors, inflation, government help, the pandemic, big verticals incorporated, and all of these are finite levers or events. I feel sooner rather than later their growth will be more in line with GDP, which should be quite above global GDP, but nothing compared to past growth. Caspi's bet on Central Asia and oil. I don't feel comfortable making a bet that Kazakhstan or Central Asia will change their current global position significantly. They will be much better in 10 years than now. I, I can be sure about that, but I have no idea if their relative position will be improved. And for Caspi, that is very much important. It's above my pay grade to elaborate on why these regions are this poor and how why that might change. Also, oil is such a big percentage of their GDP and I'm not necessarily looking to go long oil. Valuation is demanding also. That's the last thing, the valuation. It is quite rich already. Compared to BABA, it's not far that far away. Like it's probably a bad comparison, but I prefer to bet the bet number two, BABA, for many reasons, especially very long-term reasons. Revenues of 4.2 billion and net income of 1.9 billion currently for Caspi. They also expect to grow this by 25%, at least the, the bottom line. The company trades at 23 billion valuations around 12 times earnings. So though 12 times is cheap valuation taking into account past growth, future growth, risk is also another factor. If we take into account the, the future risk of these cash flows, then I don't, I don't think it's as cheap as it looks at the moment. I will leave extra materials in the video uh, description to, that go far more in depth and the researchers uh, who share them, they know much more about this company than I do. Albeit I warn you that they are all biased because they have a position in this talk as I do when I share my thesis in this channel. So, well, that's all. Be safe, take care, see you soon.